market update for you. Um, as you see, we have Bitcoin here, and I'm going to discuss this a little bit, but I'm going to also discuss a few things that I've seen in the room that have kind of irritated me or bothered me, and I don't want to see them, and I don't want to be asked questions on it. Number one, I don't use leverage in my trading, so do not talk to me about leverage. Uh, do not come up with scenarios or ideas. People that usually use extreme amounts of leverage and so forth, they don't make money in trading and they're usually whipsawed out of the marketplace every time there's a move. Uh, and once they get caught on the wrong side, they, they, they try to average down into uh, over leveraged positions, usually blowing their accounts. That's been my experience of what complaints that I've had from people in the past saying, oh, I did very bad. And this, unfortunately, is the majority of people, 80 to 90%. So that's a very high number right there. So what does that tell me? Uh, tells me not to do that, um, not to trade that way because it, A, it's very stressful, it sounds, and B, um, it's um, it, it's like uh, going to Vegas gambling, not my style of trading. So I don't use leverage. Don't ask me about it. It's not part of what I do. Um, and, you know, I, I'm very happy with the results I get. If I get out over 100% a year cumulatively where it grows, one year after another, I'm going to do okay. And it's far beyond what most good, really good traders can do. And I do it with very low risk, right? I, I mean, uh, it, my trades overall, um, they don't have a lot of risk to them. Uh, I catch the right moves and so forth, and my risk reward profile is very high. And that's what I care about. Another thing is reactionary FUD. Uh, you hear a bunch of headlines in the news about taxes and all. Number one, uh, people aren't rationalizing this correctly. They're just reacting. doesn't really mean much. Um, uh, also, uh, you know, that's just the market. I mean, the market's going to move. And it doesn't matter if there was no news about taxes. The market would probably have gone down anyway because it was telling us that it was weak. And nothing has changed with my trades, have they? I'm looking to buy 10% of Bitcoin over here at the 45,000 level. We made a big move down. Now we'll see if we can get continuation lower and go from there. We had a break from up here and we had a first drop that went all the way down to 50,000, then it bounces, creates this symmetrical triangle right here. Uh, this pennant-like formation, and then breaks, and then we had the lower move down here, and then we're congesting again here, and we'll see if we break again down to the downside, and again, I'm looking to buy down here. I want to buy on weakness, because I had this plan from last year, right? Nothing's changed. Uh, I'm looking by the summertime to get fully into crypto and Bitcoin, because of longer term numbers that I'm looking for us to go up to, right? I'm looking for us to continue to the upside throughout the rest of the year. That hasn't changed. Nothing I've said has changed. Um, so uh, having this reactionary type of logic and thinking doesn't really mean much to me. And I don't pay attention to FUD and I don't freak out every time the market moves. Um, you know, that's for the news stations that need to glamorize things and, and for the people who have no real clue about what's going on uh, because they're trading off their emotions and feelings and thoughts and their, their minds are not wired correctly for trading. And they're not going to generally be profitable when they, they work or function that way. It's pretty sad. Um, so I don't do that. Uh, now, my plan from here is to start buying uh, into the summertime. Uh, by July and so forth, I want to be fully in Bitcoin and crypto. And I'm looking for a move that goes all the way back up. And well, if we can get to that 118,894 number, that would be fantastic later in the year. Uh, that's my plan. Um, that's what the stats have told me and nothing has changed really uh so you know the only thing that has changed and you, you need to listen to, to is um uh, 
right now I'm not doing much. I'm, I'm waiting for good opportunities. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is that I'm, I'm watching, I'm looking, uh, I'm observing where different places in the market, what opportunities are out there for things that might, you know, explode upward in the future when we have our next move um, higher. Or if we get a, a larger move down, we'll, we'll see. I want to see what the market does. I have to trade off of what's there, not reactionary or feelings or anything. Everything that I do is based off of good sound logic. I also don't use indicators. Don't expect to see indicators on my charts. Uh, they're funhouse mirrors that just show momentum and um, divergences, crossovers, and it, it, they don't really mean much. I mean, you have far more understanding of the market by understanding support and resistance and understanding price action than you ever will with indicators. Indicators are usually used by, uh, how would you say, newbies looking for a system to tell them what's going to always happen in the future. and It doesn't work that way. This is um, supply and demand. This is market dynamics. Anything you can see, other people can see. The object is to see what they can't see and understand what they can't understand because of the complexities that are involved. And there are many, many mathematical and, and uh, numbers basis that are unseen in the marketplace by most people. And that's what I focus on because I can actually find relationships of the numbers that make sense. Hence is why I, I make an above average profit and I can call trades that are generally very good. But I do it when the market tells me there's a trade, not when I want there to be a trade. That's just silly and um, statistically unwise. I'm paying attention to numbers all the time. I don't need anything like that. And it's not, I'm not guessing. Um, unfortunately, most people are and having to deal with people, especially in the room, that come up with these nonsensical ideas is, um, yeah, okay. It's not something I'm going to pay a lot of attention to. Sorry. Uh, I'm, I don't have a reactionary mind when it comes to trading. It just is what it is. Uh, I've got my plan. I know where I'm going to buy. I know where I'm going to sell. And, you know, let it go from there and see who's right. Um, see what the stats say <laughs> and uh, you know what the, the market will decide now one thing that I do want to go over let's see here is XRP XRP if it gets back under a dollar I'm going to be looking hard at this um, 78 cents and under all the way down to you know the 60s that would be ideal but we'll, we'll see I kind of like XRP as um, having more strength. The other thing that I've seen that I thought was very interesting was, again, Ethereum. Ethereum seems very strong. I have a feeling that hedge funds don't have enough of this, and they're the ones that are holding it up and buying at higher numbers. Um, so the numbers on the price action here looks really good. Um, Litecoin, a little bit less than I was expecting, but still very strong overall. It did have a strong move up to the 300 uh, range all the way up to here. So this would be another one that I would be looking at in the future. Um, it's stronger than um, what I would have expected. And if it, it drops down under 200, I would definitely be looking to become a buyer. So I'm looking at Litecoin, looking at Ethereum, and I'm looking at XRP. And I started to move money longer term in for the summertime, if you remember my videos from the past, uh, into this space because I'm going to be doing some, I'm going to be allocating more resources to crypto and also to silver um, in the months to come because uh, I believe we're going to get hit by an inflationary, you know, all the, the everything is there and it's just a matter of time. And it's a ticking time bomb. And plus, I get a lot of cash on the sidelines. Um, so uh, uh, that is my thinking. Uh, there's nothing to do right now. I'm going to wait for a move that goes down on under a dollar on XRP. I'm going to wait for 45K on Bitcoin uh, down here. And, you know, um, we'll see what happens. And other than that, 
longer term. You're going to be looking for a move that goes back above and, you know, yep, that's basically it. Nothing's changed is the main point of this video. And I hope you understand that. And uh, uh, don't ask me about indicators. Don't dare ask me about leverage because I don't use it. And um, don't worry about any of the FUD or news or any, you know, doesn't mean anything. Cause and effect. Everything's in the chart as far as I'm concerned. And other than that, also have a wonderful week. Until next time. Alrighty, guys. Bye.